5, <clears throat> beginning with the 17th verse. And it reads as follows from the ESV Study Bible. On one of those days, as he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting there who had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And behold, some men were bringing on a bed a man who was paralyzed. And they were seeking to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the midst before Jesus. I'm going to read it from the book of Mark. Soon the house where they were staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. The word of the Lord is blessed. They dug a hole in the roof above Jesus' head. Now I know that, that was my mom's house. She would look, Reverend Slater, and simply ask this question. Who gonna pay for this? So for a few moments, or today, I want to talk to you from the subject. Who gonna pay for this? <laughs> Have you ever overindulged when it came to spending money? Because you simply had to have what you wanted to have. After you have overindulged because you simply had to have it, have you ever asked yourself, who gonna pay for this? Have you ever received a monetary penalty, we call that a fine, associated with an offense imposed as part of a judgment and commitment for something that was not your fault and it was beyond your control? When you see the cost attached to the monetary penalty, before you lose your mind, you ask yourself, who gonna pay for this? Have you ever been in Walmart or Target? And you go into the shopping situation to purchase one or a few selected items 
Yet when you reach the checkout counter and you come to the realization that you have picked up more items than you anticipated, your bank account gently reminds you, who gonna pay for this? The Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. However, when we examine the scripture and we look at the multitude of sins that we have committed and we are striving to have eternal life, we ask ourselves, who going to pay for this? We've all made bad choices. When we have the option to make good choices and we find ourselves in the heat from the fire that we create and we need someone to bring us out of the fiery storm that we have created for ourselves. We ask ourselves, Sister Cornice, who gonna pay for this? And when we find ourselves asking who is going to pay for this, we are really asking ourselves who in the world is going to get me out of this mess I got myself into. Have you ever been there? However, when we examine the book of Luke, we understand that Jesus is the one who paid for this. All the half five folks giving God praise up in here, up in here, because Jesus has paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left the princess faith, but he washed it. <laughs> Come on now. Quite a snow. Brother Slater, we can celebrate on today, no matter how filthy we are, because he washed us. When we're trying to live right, we got to remember that he washed us. When we're trying to love right, we have to remember that the master washed us Why as snow because he, he paid for this. Who wrote this gospel so his readers would understand that Jesus is for all people. The song where it says red, yellow, black, and white. They are all precious in his sight because Jesus is for all people. See, Jesus is the promised one of God as prophesied in the Old Testament. And what he accomplished serves as clear evidence of who he is. When we review the account in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, these accounts show us that the power of God is with him. He has the authority to forgive sins. He has the power to heal. The Son of Man has the sovereignty and supremacy to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think. However, my brothers and my sisters, we must have faith. And we know that Abraham, Abram, he believed the Lord, and the Lord counted him as righteous because of his faith. And faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. See, this faith is not just about knowing about Jesus. But it is knowing and wanting to know him more intimately for yourself. With the desire to be in him, to grow in him, 
and to be changed by him. Do you want to be in him? Do you want to grow in him? And do you feel the need to be changed by him on today? However, we understand by looking at the text that persistence in giving to Jesus is essential. Somebody missed that? You gotta be persistent with your pursuit, right? And know that your healing and your possible deliverance is connected directly to your faith. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. But before you trust, my brothers and my sisters, you got to listen. But unless Christ's word is preached, there's nothing to listen to. So it behooves us to incline our hearts to hear. However, let me hit you with this one. Because we have to do our part. And you do understand that as believers, thinking of Simpson, we have to do our part when it comes to making disciples and growing disciples. But see, I want to ask you these questions. How can people call for help if they don't know who to trust? Yeah, that's true. How can they know who to trust if they have never heard of the one who can be trusted? And how can they hear if we don't tell them? And how is anyone going to tell them unless someone is sent to do it? In the text, we have a full church. It's a house, but it's a full church. And Jesus is the preacher for the hour. See, the text lets us know that there are many, so many people in the house. There was no longer room, and you couldn't even get through the front door. Jesus ready. I know the fire marshal was upset. <laughs> but as Jesus ministered to the crowd, we observed that there are countless different perspectives, personalities, and beliefs in the crowd. Remember, when you have a crowd in the church, it consists of the unchurched, Amen. regular attendees who just want to see what's going on. Amen. They're converts, and then there are disciples in the house of the Lord. All right. But see, the Bible lets us know that the scribes and the Pharisees were also in the crowd. I'm going to let you know. <laughs> Today, the scribes and the Pharisees are in the crowd. This lets us know that the level of concern by the Jewish authorities was great when it came to what Jesus was doing. Do I got some Bible readers up in here? However, think it was. Let me tell you this. Something was about to happen All right. that would provide these guests and those in the crowd with the unforgivable, undeniable experience that would challenge their theology. Amen. Luke lets us know that the power of God was present mm. and is present to heal. Let me throw this in parenthetically on today. The power of God, power of God. is in this place yes. and it's here to heal. Amen. While Jesus Amen. was preaching, Amen. four friends arrived carrying a man 
on a bed that was paralyzed. I want you to understand that they were struggling sometimes to take care of friends who got issues. Their homeboy, he had some issues. Let us understand that this paralyzed man was one of many who sought Jesus wherever he went. However, this paralyzed young man was unable to get to Jesus on his own. Amen. My brothers and my sisters, we have some friends yes. who cannot get to Jesus on their own. But see, he was glad that he was blessed to have loyal and determined friends who were available and willing to help. Are we loyal? Yeah. Are we determined friends available and willing to help? His friends were determined to get him to Jesus. I need some friends like that. Amen. I need some friends yeah. Yeah. who are determined and willing to get there remotely before the Father. But see, they couldn't get to Jesus because of the crowd. And often we cannot find our way to Jesus due to the distractions of the crowd and the distractions in the crowd. John MacArthur states, no one, are you listening to me? No one in the worship service would move aside to allow the man to carry him in. Amen. The crowd, church folks, <laughs> the crowd formed a barrier both with their bodies and their hearts. Fortunately for the paralyzed man, his friends were both determined Amen. and resourceful. Unable to gain access to the house, unable to gain access to the church, they went up. Somebody missed that? Hallelujah. Unable to get access to the house and the church, they went up. Sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, they just simply have to go up. They went up to the roof. And when they got there, they moved the tiles. They dug through the roof, and the four friends lowered their friend in front of the master. Amen. See, at this point, Reverend Slater, at this point, I like, I like this part. There was a claim. There was a confrontation. And there was a consequence. The claim. Your sins have been forgiven. The confrontation was by the church folk. Yeah, yeah. The Pharisees and the scribes said, who in the world does he think he is? What he's doing is blasphemous. Yeah. Only God can forgive sin. But Jesus knew what they were thinking. He said, why do you question this in your heart? Is it easier to say uh, sins are forgiven or stand up and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, 
Take up your bed and go home. That was the confrontation. But then there's the consequence. Somebody look to their neighbor and say immediately. <laughs> Everyone watched the man jump up, pick up his mat, go home while praising the true and living God. So there was a claim. There was a consequence and a confrontation. So I asked myself, once I read this, who is going to pay for this? Who is going to cover the damage we create as we strive to make our way to Jesus? Who is going to pay the cost for the broken tiles in our life? The answer is simply Jesus. Here in the text, he provides divine proof that he has the ability to pay for the damage caused by us as we strive to get closer to him. He proves he has the power to heal. Yeah. And the power to forgive yeah. sins. Yeah. See, number one, Jesus saw faith at work. Number two, Jesus forgave the sins. And Jesus delivered the paralytic man and his healing set him free. See, there is a name. I love to hear. I love to sing his words. See, it sounds like music in my ears. It's the sweetest name on earth. Look to your name and say, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And because he first loved me, we can have joy on today. Because he loved us first. We are free from the weight of our imperfections. Because he first loved me. You may be broken. You may be tired. You may be sick. But rejoice because he first loved us. Don't be ashamed of your trials. Don't be ashamed of what you're going through. Don't be ashamed of your past. Don't be ashamed of your pain. Don't be ashamed of your hurt because my Lord he loves me don't give up don't lose hope don't get weary simply declare he abides in me he gives me victory because God he never fails just keep your faith and never cease to pray just walk Upright, call him new day or night. He'll be there, he'll be there. There's no need to worry because God never fails. We have assurance on today because God never fails. We have the courage as we go because God never fails. We can be bold as we serve because God never fails. We can be confident in the midst of the unknown because God never fails. He saves. He provides. He keeps. He teaches. He encourages. He protects. He speaks. He sustains. He engages. He heals. He comforts. He redeems. He delivers. He reveals. He illuminates. He guides. He promotes. He strengthens. He is our helper. In 
my God. You never fail. See, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Do you get joy in the midst of hard times about what he's done for you? See, there's joy in my hands. There's joy on my lips. There's joy in my feet. There's joy in my heart. There's joy that fuels my praise. The songwriter says, floods of joy. Oh, my soul, like sea, billows roll. It's Jesus came in to my heart. I'm talking about all that he's done for us. So, who will pay for this? Who will pay for this? Jesus paid for this. And he's willing to pay for this. See, I'm going to say it one more time. And I'm going to leave you alone. Jesus provides divine proof that he's able to pay for the damages caused by us as we strive to grow in him. He proved he has the power to heal and forgive sins. He saw faith at work. He forgave the transgressions and he delivered the paralytic and the healing set him free. Are you ready to be set free? Are you ready to be set free? Who gonna pay for this? Jesus. Let's go to the church row. If you're ready for Jesus to pay for this, the doors of the church are open. He's willing. He's able. He will carry you through. Just ask the Savior to him. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing. He will carry you through. The doors of the church are open.